Well, I want to welcome you to this very beautiful set at the Voice of Evangelism headquarters studio in Cleveland, Tennessee. And I have with me my sidekick, my co-host for today, Pamela Janine Stone, alias the Pooster, alias Pooh Bear, alias Nana, alias Mom. Is alias the right word to say? I guess that's I have lots of names. You have lots of names. Pam, thank you for being here. And by the way, your hair looks great. We have a guy named Gio who works on staff here that fixed you right up and you fixed and you got a, you know you got a little touch of gray, but you actually look I really know, good I with do. that. I do. do I have a touch of gray? A little bit. <laughs> I've been a overtaken bit. by gray, <laughs> you know. But anyway, we have a little special here. We've titled this Making Memories. What is the one thing you always tell us? As a family, when we make we're, memories, make memories, and how yeah. do you do that? I mean, not only doing things, but you've always left to take pictures. And we have how many books of pictures do we have at the house? We have oh, there's a lot, yeah, cabinets full. Well, you know, used to you would you would take pictures and you would have film, and you would have to go and to get it developed, yep. and then I would put them in. And books. you didn't know how it turned out. Sometimes they were. I remember I remember at times that they'd be overexposed, underexposed, blurred, and it's like, oh my goodness, we would lose film. Yep. Uh, going to Israel, remember we used to go to yes. Israel, and when we went to Israel, they would always say, take your film out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people would have taken all those pictures and those old X ray machines would erase everything that was there. And when we first started doing TV programs in 2000, it used to just almost petrify me of putting all yeah. the video film. Remember that? I mean, I was like this. We spent this whole time taping, but we never lost any videotape, thankfully. Yep. Here's what I want to do today. I thought you would enjoy this, especially during this time of the year, which I think is really everyone's favorite time of the year. And of course, for many of us, including ourselves, our mother is now in heaven to be with the Lord. She passed away. My mother did this year. Your mother's with the Lord. My daddy's there. And so there's family members, some of our older family members, all, all of our grandparents that you and I know have gone to be with the Lord. And so you miss them this, you know, this time of year. So this time of year for some people can be almost depressing because right. they miss seeing them. They miss having them in their family. They miss this opportunity and this time together. But we want to also, uh, Pam and I share some memories. So I'm going to do this right now. Pam, I'm going to do it this. I'm going to break this down into three parts. Memories when you were younger, and they don't have to be holiday memories or Christmas memories. Memories right after we were married that something, it can stand anything, and then memories of today. What are the best memories you remember? So Pam's going to start this out. Let's, uh, we're going to interview her. Miss Pam Stone, good to have you here today. What is, what is a memory that you remember growing up that of any kind that just stands out in your mind? Well, um, I don't have a whole lot of like Christmas memories that I could just pull from, but, uh, when I was little, you know, we would always do things as a family, not just our immediate family, but aunts and uncles. And uh, one of the biggest things was, you know, Alabama always played Auburn. I knew that was going to come the up. holidays. This was the memory. This is the number one memory because she still talks this about this. This is my memory. Yeah, yeah. That but, Alabama would play but Auburn. But tell them what you would, did. Everybody got we together, right? We would all right? get together. How yeah, many were in the house? How many, how many were there? Probably 20, 25, you know, we would just all get together. And did it get wild sometimes? It got wild sometimes. Did, now in Alabama... Sometimes a bad kind of wild, but... Yeah, yeah. Not for, for some of the adults that weren't yes. quite saved, yes. if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. So you, you uh, college football people probably understand what I'm talking about there. So, but you, why do you remember that? Because of the family or just because of the I ball game? I think it's because of all the family getting together, you know, the family being together. And uh, I'm, I'm always... I think in order to make memories, it just doesn't happen. Right. I think you have to purposely try to do things that, as a family, I know, like, with us, we do things, which I know, you know, maybe we'll get into that, but yeah. we do things as a family just to try to, you have to try to do that. It just doesn't happen. Right. You know. So you're, to make a memory, you have to be doing something with family. And I will say this, you're the most family-oriented person I've ever been around in my life. You really are. You, 
you thrive for vacation. You plan vacation a year and a year half out. And that's the truth, you know, <laughs> you can't deny that. And then But you, you have to plan. That's right. what I'm saying. And it you just want, doesn't happen. You want all the family involved. Like if one of the kids can't come, it's just not doesn't feel right. If the grandbabies aren't there, it doesn't feel right. And I think that's a wonderful uh, way to be. Now, let's go to the second memory of after we were married in, uh, on April the 2nd, 1982, we traveled a lot. Uh, I, I'm almost trying to read you what you're going to say, but what's one of the biggest memories you always remember about right after we were married in the earlier days? Uh, for Christmas? Anything. It doesn't have to be that. It can be anything. Well, I mean, when we were first married, you and I would travel up to sometimes the week of Christmas. All year so, we travel. All year long. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, that those first years, first many years, probably until Jonathan was born, which was eight or nine years after we got married, we traveled all the time. So we were on the road we all the time. We were in a revival one time, and to talk about a memory, this may be your memory. We stayed in a hotel in La Follette, Tennessee, 11 weeks, yep. nonstop. I think we went home one day or twice just for business to sign letters, and that was an 11 week revival. And people act like that's kind of a glamorous thing to travel and minister. And, yeah. and it was very difficult living in a hotel. Well, we went from that 11 week revival to a five week revival in, was it Florida or North Carolina? We it were gone 16, 16 weeks, weeks. 16 weeks. So yeah. now think about this every night, 16 weeks preaching. And I got so exhausted after that that I had to shut the meeting down physically. I brought, uh, yeah. remember Joel Talley is a good friend, Joel. Some of you know may know Joel. We brought Joel in to pray with people. I could preach and I would literally go sit down and he would pray for people. And uh, one of the funny things happened, he got, he was, you know, a young preacher and he, he bent over to pray for somebody and split his pants. That's what I remember about that meeting, about Joel being there. Uh, but so. But for Christmas, you know, once we got married, we would always go to the mountains where your family lived. Yeah. And I had never seen that much snow. That's what in I was going to In Alabama, say. you know, yeah. we, we would get a few snowflakes and maybe an inch of snow. But tell but them about there, the snow in those areas. There were Christmases. I can remember one particular Christmas where the snow was halfway up the uh, patio sliding door. And when I got up that morning, I couldn't, I had never seen that kind of snow. And the cars, it would be so cold in the mountains in some of those mountain areas that the cars would not, would hardly crank. It yeah. would be like 10 below, 50, not yeah. all the time. And um, so now, now what's your greatest memories that you think we have? Well, the times that we're together as a family. You know, <laughs> That's once, once, yeah, we, once grandma, granddad died and grandma moved here, actually, we started having Christmas here at our house. Yeah. And um, I, I enjoy that. You know, I enjoy the kids um, getting up Christmas Day and. Christmas Eve, you, we have a, tr we have, she says she has traditions that are non-breakable. Not I mean, you, you just never change a Pam Stone tradition. But you like to cook. And so what do you do the night, the day before is we... Yeah, so Christmas Eve, we just kind of have... Just and we our, celebrate Hanukkah at times too. We're kind of a, we're kind of a yeah, we're family kind of a that we're kind of both on that, you yeah. know, which is, which is fine for people to do. We um, just have Christmas, just our family, just the Stone Media family. family. Yeah. Children, grandchildren. Now, now there's grandchildren. Praise God. That's, <laughs> that's a sweet uh, thing in life is those grandbabies. Yesterday, uh, Johanna, which is, is she three? Three. Yet? She's three. Okay. She has this doll and she couldn't get it dressed. And she said, help me, help me. So I picked up the doll, dressed the doll. She says, pop, pop, thank you, pop, pop. I said, what are you doing? She says, she's going to church. She put <laughs> now her in she's the, ready to go she to church. She put her in this little stroller. It's a doll. She says, she loves church, pop, pop. She's going, and, and she strolled her right down the house into the bedroom. She time, thinks you go to church and then it's time to go to yeah, bed because that's yeah. their life. She loves church. So um, that, so really for you, family time, right? Well, let me share with the people a couple things that let's go for what we call the earlier days. Without a doubt, my, uh, my memories of early days would be, and I'm talking about before marriage, long before marriage, would be the early time I traveled before we were married after I was called to preach because I would get in a car. Let me just say this. I preached a four-week revival every night at your church in Northport, Alabama. Got, remember that? Got in the car at night 
and drove all the way to Salem, Virginia, which was, was that 10 hours or nine? Do you remember? Did you go to Salem? We went to Salem and I just... I thought you went to Virginia Beach. I did, but I dropped by Salem on the okay. way and I ended up going to Virginia Beach and drove nonstop and literally, now imagine four weeks of preaching. What was it, a 14 hour trip or something? I don't even remember. It's been so long ago. I was thinking that you had somebody with you though. Not on that one, not on that one. Okay. And so I went to Virginia Beach and started another revival and I'd, heard, I'd already been preaching several weeks. I think my memories would be summed up as memories of going and traveling before I was as a single person. Because you know, it was really lonely. And at times, honestly, I hate to say this, but it got depressing. However, the revivals that went on five weeks, seven and a half weeks, 11, you know, all those lengthy revivals, uh, Pulaski, Virginia, five and a half, five weeks, they created amazing memories of spiritual results, people that are still serving the Lord, spiritual sons and daughters that came out of those. And I think I still refer back, I see the pictures that we have on file, I still refer back to that time. The, the memory that I remember after we got married would have to be, first of all, traveling with you was an absolute blast. I just love the fact that this is before kids. I call it BC, before kids. BK. B, okay, before children, I meant to say, okay. BC. See, I don't want to, you, you're <laughs> right there, it'd be BK. BK, BC, before children. And someone asked you years ago, what did you all do before the kids came? And you said slept. We slept, that's because what I said. Because we, we would have, um, I, would, I would get up, study, all, study through the day, pray all day, preach, have late altar calls, and then usually we would go home and eat something, which is not the best thing to do for your health, by the way. And then when we go to bed, I would, I would have a you know, 14, 15 hour day sometimes, and we could actually sleep. You know, I get up now, you know this, three, four, and five in the morning, because I wake you up sometimes, and you let me know it. But th those, those type of things, I remember how that uh, pre-memories were Edgemere. We went to certain places every year right. and we made great friends and they looked forward to us coming. It was like a family reunion. We would go yep. back to Pulaski. Yeah, it really was. We like would go family. back to Edgemere. It wasn't really. A lot of them were. And it was yeah. like coming back home um, for a family reunion. So my memories of when we were married for the first couple of years has to be the on the road meetings of some of the great churches that we went to, the great pastor friends, pastor friends like Tony Scott that we still have to this day. Yep. You know, I was 18, I'm now 62, and I've preached at Tony's all these years. Floyd Lahan, who's a good friend right. of mine, you know, and so some of our pastor friends, of course, have gone on to be with the Lord now. The, the memories, I think, um, of course, after we're married, had to be like you said, traveling in the winter, up into the different mountains because we had di different sets of grandparents in different areas and friends in different areas. And those snowstorms that we had to drive in and it cracked me up when we moved to Cleveland and especially here in Cleveland, people do not know how to drive when a snowflake shows up. All the stores empty out of all the food. You know, it's the truth. And why, is it, true. Bre why is it bread and milk? I mean, do they take bread and dip it in milk? I mean, what's the, no, I know why it's cereal and sandwiches, yeah. but uh, the bread and milk goes out. But we, we used to laugh when there were, it would be a dusting on the ground and people would be like crashing their cars in Cleveland. You know, you have to drive a certain way. When it's, when it's snowing, you go into low gear, you don't jake brake, which means you don't put on your brakes. You let the low gear kind of guide you. You, you, you brake way early. You're, you're very careful on bridges. Here I am giving you a lesson of what happens yeah. if it snows. We so. may need that this year, the way they're predicting the weather I to be. I don't know. So, uh, but those times of going, we've gone through, we've driven through two feet of snow on the side while the snow plow was in front of us. That, and if you've ever driven in snow at night, it has a hypnotic effect, doesn't it? It's just it coming in and you can't see far in front of you. Now, when I was a little girl, we actually lived in Chicago a couple of years. Yeah, so you and got snow in the then. winter, uh -huh. yes. So wow. I, I do remember this and I was, I was only five, but I do remember this, the snow plows would come and I remember that those snow banks being almost like up that telephone pole. Oh with yeah, we the saw snow that too. Plows. We saw that up in the mountain. Not not much, but when the snow right. drifts would come, they would drift the, up, right. up, up to the top of poles. Yeah. And I think our memories now, there's so many things, as you know, and this is part when I say health, it's not like I'm in bad health, but I, I have you know my numbers, you see them, and the doctors keep fussing at me, and it's my own fault for not 
you know, getting everything in order. But I've slowed down, not in my studying, in my prayer, not in my writing books and, and the, the YouTube videos and all that we do, but I've, I've, I've slowed down in traveling some, which, which I happen to like because I'm enjoying being more at home with you, home cooking, seriously, and the grandbabies, which live next door. And so th- my greatest memories are being made now, and I think our best memories are are in the future, Pam. I mean, I really do. I think at our age, you know, that that really I we believe can, that. You can make getting older a curse, or you can make getting older a blessing. You really can, and it's yeah. how it's all it's all in how you look at it. But I think that uh, what I see ahead in in like our family time, I'm enjoying that so much. Uh, selecting where I go, and also let me just mention that so many pastors, great pastors of great churches, are contacting us. Um, uh, that are new places we've never preached before, and I'm very excited about that because we have great. You know, we go to Lexington, not Lexington, Louisville every year, Huntington every year because right. we love Bob, we love Chuck Lawrence, we love these people. They're the greatest people. Right. It's a family reunion again every family. year, mm-hmm. but. We're also getting uh, going into a lot of new places. So I believe that we have a lot of memories to make. Now we're getting ready and uh, you know this and we've not really said a lot about this, but we're talking about our future memories. There are some things that we are very excited about, you know, and one of the things that we believe the Lord has told us to do because am I a hoarder? You are a hoarder. I mean, I mean mm-hmm. really bad. I have the first sermon I've ever preached. I have every cassette tape every videotape where I've ever preached where it was recorded. I have every sermon note I've ever preached, right? I have it. I have every picture ever taken from the beginning of me taking pictures of my altar in Virginia all the way to now. I have every picture in storage, right? My first revival poster. And I used to say to myself, why in the world am I keeping this? This is ridiculous. And you used to say, Perry, you could throw some of that away. And I said, no, I might use it one day. Well, now... On our property beside the lake on Omega Center International property is a beautiful piece of property. And we have an architect designing right now our legacy center, which will be four generations of the history of the ministry. And all that stuff, my sister is working for me now. As an, all that as stuff. A, uh, she's, in my, she's like my right-hand person now. My sister Diana is, which is good to bring family in, you know. And so she knows all my notes, all my sermons, all, my, all of dad's stuff, all the granddad stuff. And we're actually going to be traveling to some places to get some old pictures from people. We're asking, by the way, all my relatives that's watching, I need your old pictures. I promise I'll give them back to you. I need... Don't believe uh, him. Now, no, wait a minute. I promise I'm going to make copies and blow them up. I need some of Dad and Morgan and uh, Chester Adair. I'm sorry, Lord Adair and Chester Hurst and some of those early revival pictures of Dad. That some of you sisters have those up, uh, up in the mountains. I know you do. And I need uh, some of you, if, if, if some of you that are the Dumfords, all the Dumfords that are watching me. What? I got, look, I, I went to a town one time and asked them, I said, I'm looking for Rufus Dumford. They said, son, these mountains are full of Dumfords and you're probably related <laughs> to all of them. And that's, so if you're a Stone or a Dumford, you're probably related to me. If you live in Kentucky or Tennessee or uh, maybe West Virginia, et cetera. But we're going we're to need some uh, pictures. But what we're going to do, we're going to build a legacy center and then we'll have a Holy Land Relic Bible Museum. This is going to be crazy. Uh, the Israeli um, Museum, all of our uh, antiquities are are numbered, individually numbered, photographed with papers, and the Israeli government has cleared them for us to have a museum. So we're building a, a Holy Land Museum. Pam, you've seen some of this. It is absolutely incredible. I was looking yesterday and I have pieces that date back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They, wow. they existed in that day, and it's all confirmed with, uh, with these uh, official. The gentleman that is helping us to do this has four license, uh, legal official license from the Israeli government. Everything is being done up front, up board, uh, registered and tracked, you know, because we, we don't want to have any controversy with something coming from some country because we right. don't do that. We, that won't happen. Right. And so you're going to one day be able to come to our property and visit a Holy Land, a legacy center connected to a massive Holy Land Museum. And I won't, I don't want to tell everybody what we're going to do. We're going to keep it a surprise. It's going to take about a year to get the building up. And, and, and this year we're working this year on all the items to 
you know, the pictures yeah, plus, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And this is not going to be some cheesy little uh, thing that you walk through. This is a professional museum. We have people that build museums that have PhDs and doctorates on museums that are helping us to do this. We're going to have the lighted signs. We're going to have, it's going to be, it's going to be great. And there may be someone out there that can help us with this. You want to, you know, invest in something that's going to help the, these kids to see the Bible, prove the Bible is true. Please contact my ministry if you would like to help support this because uh, it is a, it's going to be a pr pretty pricey project. But I want something that after I go to be with the Lord, and I hope that's not for a long time, but it carries on the work that we have done. The memories. The memories. Oh, look at her. She's she memories. Tied, listen, memories she all the way. Up. Memories all the way back to Abraham. Whoa, come on, Rev, you're revelating. Even Give me Abraham's some more. Abraham's memories. Abraham, th that's pretty cool. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Memories of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, the apostles. And we're up there going through stuff and people are saying, I said, do you realize this could have been in Simon Peter's house? Do you think it was? No, but it could have been. That's what Jake was up there no, the other we day. Can yeah. think we like can, we can imagine that maybe it was, right? A memory. But Pam, <laughs> thank you for joining me. I mean, you are the love of my life, the thrill of my life. First lady, only lady, uh, you are my hero, my lion. You know, Rhonda Davis calls you a lioness. Hank Davis a was lioness. She says, Pam Stone is a lioness, and you are. You're, I don't know you're what like that means. a, you're like a, well, anyway, let me leave that alone. I'll start bragging. You'll say, why did you do that? I don't like for you to do that. She doesn't like <laughs> me to brag on her. But I thank you for being with me. April 2nd next year, 40 years we will have been married. 40 We're years. We're going to have a party, by the way. I don't know where it's going to be. We're going to have a, uh, a celebration on our anniversary next year. So go to perrystone.org to get more information about the ministry. Watch the product offer that's coming up. And give me a kiss right here. Let everybody say, she's still, oh, you look so beautiful with your hair. All right. So uh, we will be uh, back in a moment with an update. Thank you. Greetings everyone, this is Perry Stone and I have a great announcement for you. I'm now making available to each of you the International Prophetic Summit, the greatest summit I was ever able to participate in. These are available on CD and DVD albums. There are 11 messages in all by myself, Bill Cloud, Mark Biltz, and also Joel Richardson. Let me just give you the titles you're going to hear. Is the seven sealed book now being opened? The parable of the fig tree and what it means for America. What would Jesus do during this present civil war? A biblical response to aliens and UFOs. I preached a message called the Green New Deal and its economic impact on your family. Another great message that was preached. A word for America from the prophecy of Habakkuk. Another message is called, What Time Is It? Bill Cloud stunned the audience with a message called, Beware the Abab Rav. I preached a message called, Answering Tough Apocalyptic Questions That No One Is Answering. Mark Biltz came back and preached a message called Jeremiah is a prophet for our day. I closed the conference out with this message, should you prepare for a pale transition? Now I wanna say something to you. It is a right now word. They are prophetic. They answer questions. And these are the unedited versions of the message. Now listen to me. On the manifest telecast, you only get about 20 to 21 minutes of a message. I still have another 40 minutes to preach. Not only that, but we never show the speaker's messages. And sometimes some of the information they share is for certain at-home ears only. It really would be rejected if it was put on social media. So I'm going to tell you how to get this series. If you want to get the CD album, the number is 21 PS CD, and it's for $65 or more donation. If you would like to get the DVDs, and can I suggest to you to get the DVDs because especially with Mark Biltz, they have PowerPoint pictures. I show you pictures in my messages and people really seem to enjoy that. But the DVDs are offer number 21 PS DVD for $95. Now here's how you order. You can call toll free 1-888-21-BREAD, order that way. Or you can contact perrystone.org on the internet, log on and order online. Or just send us a check to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now remember this, that those checks and those orders go 100% to the Voice of Evangelism Ministry to help keep the manifest program on the air. Now we're living in the greatest prophetic times that there's ever been. There is a clash between two kingdoms taking place. You are only 
arming yourself properly if you are armed with revelation knowledge and the truth of God's Word. May I encourage you, call, go online, or write me right now. God bless you. Well, season's greetings today. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and all everything else that's combined with that. I hope you enjoyed uh, Pam and I uh, sharing with you just from our heart today. We do this once a year at this time of the year as a special. We did one from our house, house last year. But uh, man, she looked good. We have a guy on staff that is a special hairstylist. Now, that's not what he does. He's actually a computer expert, but uh, he took her took good care of her hair. And uh, man, I, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone because she says I'm talking too much about how she looked, but she's looked great and uh, Pam is doing good. Some of you may have known Pam fell and had a serious injury to her uh, her shoulder. She's doing better and uh, is a real trooper, works every day at the house, comes to by the office, and so I'm grateful for her and wanna give a shout out to her and honor to her. You know, <clears throat> in this time of the year, we celebrate Jesus coming to the earth and you've got to understand the reason he came was to bring a plan of redemption and salvation and eternal life to mankind who would believe on Him. Wherever you're watching me right now, if you have never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart as, as your Lord and your Savior, to save you from your sins, to write your name in heaven in the Lamb's Book of Life, and to turn to Him, do so. All you do is pray the prayer of asking Him to come in and, and to uh, cleanse you of your sins and forgive you and to make you a child of His, a child of God. Folks, let me just say something to you. Eternity is forever. This li life is 70, 80, 90 years. Or some go shorter than that. Some may live longer than that. But the bottom line is that eternal life is forever. And there's only two locations that a human spirit, after it exits the body of de at death, will go to. One is the underworld, separated from God if you do not have a covenant with Him. And the other is the celestial world, we call it heaven, where Christ and the holy angels and the Father dwells. So today, if you have never accepted Christ into your heart, would you pray to Him? Would you ask Him to forgive you of your sins? And would you ask Him to come into your life? And then <clears throat> study the Bible, study the Word of God. Uh, find a fellowship of Christians and believers that believe the Bible to be the true Word of God. And thankfully, they're found all over the world. I want to say to our partners, thank you for making this year the greatest year in the history of the Voice of Evangelism ministry. More souls have been won this year. More people have been reached this year. More spiritual results have happened this year than any other year. And your support has helped make this possible. Once again, we hope you have a great season with your family. And we pray God's richest blessing on each of you. See you next week.